Welcome to the Net Cetera Podcast. I'm your host, Blake Minho Kim. Join me as we focus on demystifying the innovations driving the new internet. Hello, hello. How are you doing, Alex? Well, hello. What's going on? Doing well, doing well. It's uh, good to see you again after I uh, eat Denver. Really excited to, uh, you know, dive into Charmverse. I feel like, you know, full transparency, I think, for any listeners out there, um, you know, we at Mines and use Charmverse pretty extensively on across the entire DAO surface. And so really excited to kind of share what you guys are doing with the world and, you know, get into things. But to, to kick things off, you know, every episode, we always like to start with an origin story. So we'd love to hear a bit more about Alex and, you know, tell us about yourself, you know, your journey um, just overall and then how you got to Charmverse. Uh, and then we can dive deeper into that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, it's, just a, it's kind of a long journey. Uh, I think both Blake and I suffer from uh, the the Asian, uh, you know, the Asian gene that we look younger than uh, than we actually are. Um, so I started as a as a developer uh, writing software that you put on military drones, um, and then after a while, uh, eventually moved to New York and started my first company in two thousand and eleven. Um, so it's a, it's a big data AI company. It wasn't called AI then. It's AI wasn't cool. Um, yeah. So we were making predictions for, um, for publishers, a particular news organization. Mm-hmm. So like the, the CNN, the Forbes, weather.com of the world, mm-hmm. like we let you like A-B test the headlines. We let you, uh, we basically tell you how should you like place your content uh, on mm-hmm. your own homepage for really large properties. Um, Right, I actually right. remember one time, like Forbes CEO, like called us and said, like, "Hey, we're launching our like Forbes top 100, uh, you know, like uh, billionaires, whatever." So like one of our largest, yeah. um, you know, website of the week, and we're like, and they're like, "Oh, making sure that you guys are okay," you know. We're like, we serve properties that are honestly 20 times, if not 50 times your size. So it literally like a bit in, in, in our charts on like, you know, in terms of like, traffic we'll volume. We'll take care of it. We'll be all right. Yeah, we'll be yeah. okay. Yeah, we'll take care of it. No problem. Um, so yeah, done that. Ended up selling the company uh, and then yeah. like stay on the AI train and started uh, a second company. Uh, by the way, all mm-hmm. these have been with the same uh, tech co-founder, Matt. Uh, nice. uh, Matt Casey. Shout so to Matt. That's, yeah. Yeah, he's, Matt's awesome. Uh, and currently yeah, our co- my co-founder and CTO of Chambers. Um, so yeah, together we started a, an AI company called X.AI. Uh, for mm-hmm. some of you who follow Elon, he currently owns the a- X.AI domain. Um, it, it's a, we, we sold the company also, and then the, uh, the, the acquirer ended up selling the domain to Elon. So we did not sell the company to Elon, uh, but uh, yeah, that, that was the, uh, that's the story. Uh, but X.AI was a, a meeting scheduling uh, AI agent. Uh, and we were way I think I before, remember uh, using X.AI. I literally didn't know that actually. And now I'm just yeah, like, think, the pieces are coming together. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's, that's, uh, that's a lot of, a lot of VCs, a lot of entrepreneurs uh, use it. Um, we, and we were quite early. Uh, we started a company mm-hmm. in 2013, 2014. And yeah, it's kind of, again, pre-LLM, pre-TensorFlow, uh, for those of you <laughs> like nerdy like us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been building AI for a long time. Um, but as I was running X.AI, we were, we were like 60 people. And uh, I'm such an organization, organizational designer. nerd. Um, I spent a lot mm-hmm. of time thinking about like, how do we run like how do we run a decentralized team? How do we like maybe build autonomous unit within within the startup? Um, and I was like just studying how Google does it, who how like you know Zappos and and all the different models. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we ran a bunch of experiments, and uh, you know we we let the whole company vote on you know what uh, what feature should we ship, and we did yeah. a bunch of stuff that actually sounds kind of feel like the the sort of early versions of DAOs, right? Yeah. Um, so when we got into crypto uh, a little bit, a little, about three years ago. Um, and how'd you get started... into crypto, by the way? I'm just curious. Was it a meme know, coin? Was it someone told you about ETH and smart contracts? What was the thing? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think one of the, like, I mean, so of course, I've been hearing about uh, crypto. I mean, like sort of tracking it as, a, as an outsider for a long time. But I think it's one of the podcasts from, from Chris Dixon. Or like Chris Dixon was talking about it. Talking about Ethereum particularly, and, and like personally, I'm I'm much more interested 
about this idea of building a worldwide computer. Yeah, um, than, than that's what wrote else. me in a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. So like, and then and and that is just so fascinating. And I feel like we we're giving a second chance to rebuild the internet mm -hmm. and fix some of the fundamental challenges that that bother us. Um, yeah. And and on a subset, you know, we, um, you know, I've been running an engineering team for a long time and kind of seeing the open source model being completely broken. That it really is either people yeah. surviving a donation. Or they are funded by you know big company, including now, right? Like Facebook mm -hmm. funding, you know, open sourcing, uh, open sourcing LLM, so on and so forth. So I think like crypto is just enabling this possibility of like rebuilding the internet, redoing how we fund open source model, rethinking yep. about relationship, um, and yeah, being a organization design nerd and come trying to combine those things and and having to start talking to different DAOs. Like we need to build software for, for mm -hmm. this new way of coordination and working together. Ah, and, and, that, and that's how you got to Charmbers because you're starting to talk that's to people, it. just like, we need something. Okay, perfect. Exactly. Yeah, well, and so that obviously leads to the, I think the obvious question, which is what is Charmbers? How you describe it? And then, yeah, we'll, we'll start there. There's a lot there, yeah. Yeah, yeah we are a Web3, Communi uh, community and grants management platform. Mm. Um, so if you are a, a foundation uh, running a grants program, uh, we sort of handle the end to end from application submission, evaluation, milestone tracking, payment. Uh, that's mm -hmm. in a way like sort of a subset of the platform, but then you can run it like my own sin, uh, be able to mm -hmm. leverage both the collaboration uh, perspective of the, of the feature set, combining them with a set of uh, Web3 primitives from letting you token gate, um, you know, assign mm -hmm. specific roles based on what kind of token do you hold in your wallet to paying people in crypto, uh, to creating identity uh, or like displaying uh, what kind of asset you have in the wallet or what kind of uh, mm -hmm. credentials and attestation that you have. So really combining uh, Productivity and collaboration software uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, with crypto. And so Ooh. I'm locking new use cases. There we go. There we go. Um, and yeah, I can say we use it. Yeah, as I said before, we use it pretty, pretty extensively. We've tested every feature. So it's, it's always a fun time. Um, yeah. I would love to dig a bit deeper into, you know, talking about grants and foundations, right? Um, mm -hmm. Is that, would you say, like where you're seeing the most usage and, and kind of really finding that product market fit. Um, and how has that evolved actually over the past? Cause I'm sure you've been around as long as we have, if not slightly longer, right? Within this web three mm -hmm. ecosystem, a lot has changed over the past two years. So curious yeah. how that's evolved over time. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's pretty interesting because particularly like we, um, we're a big believer on, on, on being UX maxi. Um, mm -hmm. we, we think that like the way to really get usage and, and, and get and uh, solve real problems, uh, uh, being able to provide users with an experience that's, um, matching of uh, a web two. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is actually pretty, uh, pretty unique perspective, particularly when we started, you know, almost three years ago, uh, yeah. but, like everybody just tell me that like, no, you should just be building protocol, you know, like front end, don't worry about it. Uh, Somebody right. figure out front ends. Um, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm glad that the ecosystem is, is coming around um, to. They're to finally having... realizing, hey, if you want people to use something, maybe you got to make it usable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, maybe we'll make it usable. You know, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, for, for, for grants, I think like when we mm -hmm. look at the use case, and actually, we, we didn't set out to build a grants management platform. Um, yeah. But what it turned out is that. When you combine like, that's, uh, like these new use cases that we unlock mm -hmm. when you combine sort of productivity collaboration software with Web yeah. three, grants turn out to be this like perfect use case. Uh, mm. You need you need the form. You need to be able to there's yeah. a website that people go to and submit content. Uh, you need to be able to comment and have discussion with people. And those mm -hmm. things are, are very Web two, right? The, but but you yeah. but you need. It. Like you, you can't not have those things because that's how people yeah. communicate and collaborate. But on the flip side, being able to actually pay people in crypto or be able to assign roles based on what kind of uh, you know M NFT or or or, or, or um, credential you have in the wallet, that's a unique 
Web3 thing, uh, but it very much applicable to the different community that matters uh, to them on like what asset do you have, right? Um, so yeah, as we talk, starting to just talk to, we talk to anybody in, in, inside yeah. of the, uh, you know, in the ecosystem. And as we talk to more and more grants program and, and show them what we mm. have, and it just resonate with them that like, this is exactly what we're looking for instead of us tying mm. together discourse and some public notion page and yeah. then like public uh, saying something on, on, uh, on discord and then like having a hundred, uh, you know, individual <laughs> telegram channels and, you know, yeah. and then the air table and the fact that they're tracking and then the finance team use a different view of that. Like it was just a crazy operation nightmare, yeah. not to mention like all the crippled pieces that they trying to fit in between. Oh my God. Yeah. I can't even imagine. And it, yeah, we, we still, we're all trying to figure it out. Right. Cause I think there's like, um, everyone and everyone's so different, particularly cause I think there's so many different types of communities and different types of flows. So being able to do that in one place is always very helpful. Um, as we deal with all the time. Sorry, I think there's a motorcycle outside. Um, <laughs> anyways, so, okay. So that's been incredible. I'd love to better understand something. I always love to ask guests is, you know, it's always about the journey, right? And, you know, what you've learned, what you've gone through. Curious to hear about, like, biggest wins, favorite moments of collaboration, right? Because I think even as you're working with foundations and other type of communities, there have been a lot of learnings. And I think that's always one of the most interesting things to hear from founders is, um, yeah, like, how, how has that journey been? Like, any things that stick out to you in terms of, you know, I guess the war stories uh, as you're building this all out? Yeah, I mean, I think but going back to grants, um, yeah. we are certainly we certainly learn a ton from our customers <laughs> that you know we build a very configurable um, platform, but as we learn from like exactly kind of what are the use cases, we very quickly realize that like some of the pieces were just not sufficient in supporting like all the use cases in in in, uh, in the grant workflow. Uh, so, for example. Um, one thing that we launched a, a few months ago was this ability for you to really configure a, a defined workflow that, mm -hmm. uh, particularly for the internal workings of, uh, of how a grants program actually works, like that you have multiple steps and every program mm -hmm. is a little bit different, but similar. Um, so that yeah. sometimes maybe you want to do like an initial uh, evaluation, but then you want to have a similar group or the same group or different group of people mm -hmm. do a, a final evaluation. Uh, how do we facilitate decision making? But sometimes we want to like let the community vote, vote on it. But how do you like, actually attach all that? And then like yeah. people have different ideas how they want to sequence those and how many of those steps. Um, oh my God. And we just, yeah, we made some early assumption that it was a decent assumption for uh, for powering DAOs yep. uh, DAO or DAO proposals. That was not yep. perfect for, for, for grants. So to us, uh, definitely mm. one of the biggest wins is being able to really build with our customers and seeing them uh, reacting to what we bring back to, the, to them, you know, af after yep. hearing them and really kind of uh, build with them truly. That's absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously like best product management practices, right? Like just make some assumptions, work with the people and just iterate based off of that. Yeah. Um, got it. So just thinking about communities, right? Um, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about, I guess here's the question is like, when you're thinking about and working with these foundations, grants, like, is it, there's so much variety, I guess. So is it, how are you thinking about with each of the teams as you're iterating on these things? Uh, in terms of standardization, or is it more modularity? Is it defining flows better? Like, how has that all been going for you, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. So, we work extremely hard to not build custom yeah. software. Um, yeah. So, so the, the, the product management challenge really is how do you create something that sort of out of the box works well mm -hmm. for most of our customers, but adding just enough complexity that you can yeah. configure the platform mm -hmm. to the exact workflow that you have. Uh, and then yeah. having that balance of like easy to use right out of the box, but then like highly configurable to some of yeah. the most advanced use cases uh, in this space. And yeah, that is a super fun of a challenge, uh, but also one yeah. of the, the most difficult thing. 
I can't imagine. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. rewarding and the same. Because the cool thing is it's a multiplier effect, right? Because as you're working with these right. grants, you're expanding down there. Um, now, following up on that, right? We talked a lot about foundations. We talked a lot about grants. In, you know, As you move forward, do you think you're going to really kind of double down on that? Or are you also thinking about like other audiences and markets? And even in the future, it might be too early, honestly, but like mm-hmm. just web two and, and, you know, other types of grants. Cause also there's obviously like nonprofits and other like grant givers in, in you know, the non web three cents. Um, yeah. Is that something you're thinking about or how are you thinking about this? Yeah. So that's definitely a few axes of, of growth. Yeah. Um, so first of all, you know, going beyond grants, just thinking about foundations and, and some of the larger communities. Mm-hmm. And then we, we are equally supportive on both larger yeah. and smaller communities. And then we have both on our platform. Um, mm-hmm. But particularly for some of the larger communities, um, you know, when they're using us for grants, sometimes the conversation mm-hmm. goes like, well, can you, can you also run governance? Um, like, can mm. you, what else can we do? Or right now we're using, you know, six other platforms to do these uh, six other things. Can we actually like start to bring yeah. in all of those? And oftentimes the answer turns out to be yes. Like that, you know, you mm-hmm. can, you can have your forum in Chambers. You can create, you can run your bounty uh, platform on Chambers if you want to. Uh, but then the, the the fun thing is that like, you can now mix and match because they're now in the same platform. It's so much easier yeah. to tie these things together. Um, yeah. Or like you know you can you can run a bounty to give a token, and then from that token you get a different roles, and from that you get yeah. more access in the platform. So, but all of that is like, integrated into the system. Um, so that's, we definitely see. Yeah. yeah sorry. Oh, no, no, sorry. I was just gonna say that that's really exciting because I remember when we first started my in like twenty two, we were trying to figure out like all the bounty platforms and all the foot, like, I think you guys are finally building something that I think people like myself have been looking for basically for two years, because um, that's a challenge, right? When any, any industry is new, there's so many new people, they're all trying to tackle the same right. problem. It's all piecemeal. So I guess for my end, it's always been a bit of, can somebody just kind of tie this together, please, and all in one, so I don't have to, as an operations guy, deal with, again, like 50 different platforms. Um, yeah. So it's, it's good to hear it's coming. Yeah. yeah sorry, that, I think I cut you off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. no, no, that's not, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a, that's, it, it, it does tie to one of the fundamental things why we yeah. think we're different than, than some of the Web2 platform, uh, is that we build, we do build with, uh, many yeah. of the exciting Web3 partners out there, right? So we, uh, for example, if you're running subscription, you can run your subscription using Unlock and SuperSub. If mm-hmm. you are, you know, running a governance on Chambers, you can publish the proposal into, into Snapshot. Uh, if you're paying bounties or paying projects, you can pay your wallet. You can pay, you can kick off the first signature of your uh, uh, multi-sig on save. So we, we, we work very hard to actually work with the ecosystem to, to provide mm-hmm. that kind of value. But I think that the big difference is that just because a lot of the things, some things should be decentralized, but yeah. user experience is not one of those things. Uh, yeah. And it's much more about like, how can we, you know, make sure that, yeah, we build together, integrate well, yeah. and, and some, and then blockchain does make that a lot easier and then much yeah. more possible. Um, but yeah, I think fundamental going back to it is, is user experience. Yeah. Um, but just to finish the thoughts about growth. Um, yeah, yeah. So like, besides that, um, one area that we see is really interesting, um, mm-hmm. actually is, is, is it this talent flow? within mm-hmm. crypto ecosystem. So mm-hmm. uh, grants in a way is, is, a, is a great way to think about uh, how do amazing projects, uh, mm-hmm. interesting builders, where do they go? Who do they go to? Um, mm-hmm. So as you definitely would see us build, be building a lot more in, in this idea, how do we facilitate um, the, the flow of builders and talent mm-hmm. uh, across grants and other ecosystem um, to, to make Web3 mm. more efficient and, and, and help people get the resources that they need, uh, both for the, for the grants organization and foundation, yep. but also builders and projects in this space as well. Yeah, and I think that's where it's such an interesting thing, thinking about you know workflows, modularity, talent, because I mean, my mind naturally goes to DIDs, right? Which I think mm-hmm. for people who may not be aware of decentralized IDs, I think it's something people have been talking about in Web3 for a long time, but it's really hard, right? Because you know, a, a, it's kind of like the cold start problem, because I guess to have that decentralized ID, like you, anyone can go build one, but 
it's like I started my own uh, visa competitor, but nobody's accepting it, right? So what are the platforms <laughs> right. that use this DID? So I think if you're going the other way around of like as Charmverse, we built the platform that all the users are naturally on, then it's a lot easier to maybe integrate a DID solution or build your own or, you know, however you're thinking about it. Um, yeah, which actually leaves me... Yeah, or sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, like, that's, that's, yeah, let's go. And, and, and again, building with our communities. And so, yeah, like, and, and both the tool, but also the use mm -hmm. cases. Because uh, it's kind of to your mm -hmm. point that, you know, have, and even if you have the IDs and, and like, well, mm -hmm. what, what kind of uh, credential do you want to give people? But like, I think yeah. one example I hear a lot is like, oh, like particularly zero knowledge proof is like, oh, yeah. uh, the bank account. They're like, oh, I can just prove that I have, you know, uh, $10,000 yeah. in my account. It's like, yes, but when's the next, like, when do you expect a bank will start issuing, you know, ZK proof days, you know, yeah. like, like, so, 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 so what, before we get there, how do mm -hmm. we use this tool? And it turned out, uh, grants again being actually a really good usage mm -hmm. of this. So, like right now, if you are on, if you're using the Charmers platform, um, that there's the option to issue uh, attestation. We could we call them credentials mm -hmm. in the system, but uh, these yeah. are uh, we, we partner with Ethereum attestation service uh, and Ceramic um, to allow you to issue credentials for uh, teams that are uh, applying for grants that are winning the grants and also completing milestones on a grant. So then again, like as build and move through the, the different grants ecosystem, uh, when you show up in one foundation, you can actually be able to show off that, like not only that you are a legit builder uh, in the ecosystem, mm -hmm. but that you even have, have a track record uh, that is stored in, in decentralized storage of like things that you yeah. have done. It really kind of help you build out this like, Web3 resume. Ooh. I love that. I love that. And then how do you think about... Um, because I think something that's been always been interesting with how you guys operate is, you know, talking about modularity and collaboration, right? Like, how do you also integrate with, I guess, like other DIDs or whatnot? Or do you think like this is going to be the main like focal point and then everything else yeah. may or may not plug in depending? Yeah. Yeah, so we, we think of individuals as, as accounts. So right now yeah. when you when you join Chambers, I mean, there's multiple ways you can sign in. You can sign with your wallet, sign in with your, with your Discord, sign in with Gmail. Uh, but we actually tie all those identities together um, so yeah. that like once you, once you have connected all these things, you can identify yourself with your Farcaster account, with your Lens ID, mm -hmm. with, or with your Discord ID, with your Telegram. So like, in a way, it doesn't matter. It's a you with you. Um, and then yeah. that the, the attestation, attestation is, I mean, because of the technology, the, the attestation of the yeah. credential have to be assigned to a wallet. Uh, but yeah. you can tie that account to a, to a sort of singular identity that uh, people can, can see you are. You yeah. Know. We need more of that. We need more of that. And uh, we're building it. So I'm very excited. Um, yeah. Building. So actually, like, I want to pivot away from DIDs for a second. Because actually, this kind of, we, we're talking about DIDs. And then you mentioned ZK Proofs. And that also got me thinking over to obviously like AI, right? So I think of someone who has obviously been building in that space previously to all this, curious on how you guys are thinking about like, are you going to integrate AI into Charmverse? And if so, like, how would you do it? I don't know if, if you're going to give away too much or, you know, that's the thing, but let me know. I don't know you tell me. Well, I'll tell you maybe like things that we won't really do a low on our priorities is like mm -hmm. just giving your box to say like, well, type, you know, instead of typing this in chat GPT or, or all the other mm -hmm. platform, like type it into here. Right. Yeah. I think that is, I mean, it's nice, but like you say people what two clicks uh, or like one yeah. copy paste. Uh, I don't think that kind of uh, sort of AI integration adds a lot of value. Um, yeah. But as, as you look at different parts of our workflow, there mm -hmm. are other opportunities that we could add a lot more value into like how do we how do we think about summarizing data both within Chambers right. and outside of Chambers and how do we bring that data and information um, to this flow that we are talking about? Mm -hmm. um, so I think like that that's kind of really where our part, product thinking is is that like yeah how do we like, truly add value using data that is on the blockchain in right. IPFS uh, or outside in web in, in web two. That's exciting. I think we need stuff like that. Um, 
I think, you know, funny enough, you know, talking about foundations, actually, we should probably have a follow up conversation separate from this, but, um, you know, we were talking, we're, we're talking to OP collective and I think they literally have a request right now for something like this, right? Like an AI bot mm-hmm. to help manage governance and whatnot. And I think yeah. our product team was looking at that and we were interested, but that very important question came up of like, well, where are you storing the data? How are you doing it? And it's over here. It's on Charmverse. It's like, how do you bring that all together is the really, it's a billion dollar question. And so it feels like an open opportunity that I think somebody has got to be building on. So yeah, yeah. yeah. We're actually doing something a little bit in the, uh, well, similar, but different. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, It just announced actually today that uh, we won a a small OP grant to build the, the the super tracker for grants. Um, So, you should be expecting that like uh, there'll be a destination, of course, using Charmverse, where like if yep. you're applying for grants, uh, particularly in the OP uh, and, and the OP super chain, then uh, you can like there's one place where you can check Ooh. out instead of like trying to go to other places. Amazing, amazing. Uh, that's gonna be fun. They're they're doing yeah. OP Collective is doing some really interesting things with governance, so it's impressive to see them get it done. Because uh, yeah. I think they're doing a scale in a way that you know. We're all trying to figure it out because governance is the hardest thing <laughs> about DAOs <laughs> and online communities, right? Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So I'd love to kind of zoom out a little bit, right? I, we always love to, you know, obviously talk about the company, but also get your thoughts as Alex kind of just the general industry, right? Um, I'm very curious, you know, I think where we are today in, you know, spring of 24, I think most people would agree, you know, the market seems to be picking up this. Everyone feels like we're going to enter this next bull. The price action seems to back that up, right? Curious about how you feel like that's impacting Charmverse. And what what do you think is going to be different this time around? Um, Like, we'll start there. Or I guess like, yeah. what, what do you think has changed maybe in the past two years? And what are you optimistic about and not so optimistic about? Yeah. Yeah. So I am optimistic about the really kind of the, the advancement on the underlying technology. Um, that I mean, I, again, a ton of capital and talent and time have been spent over the past whatever fifteen years um, into building those things, and I think we're just starting to see. The, the, the fruit of that. Um, now, some of the early example is, yeah, we, which we have talked about before uh, offline about like meme coins, you know, like, uh, but meme coins happen because now you can actually have a, 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 a multiple chains that have such low fee that, that you can do stuff like that, right? So, uh, you know, the, 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 the gambling and uh, casino culture aside, that, that is a, a representation of like new primitive or new way to use blockchain that is not possible or like a lot more difficult uh, either in blockchain or, or in yeah. Web3, right? So that's actually, to me, it's just exciting. Like ho- hopefully mm-hmm. that's not the only thing, um, but yeah. I think like being able to see that, uh, seeing like, I think like Farcaster, like some of the, yeah. some of the um, innovation that's happening over there. Um, and j- just a quick commentary on meme coins, mm-hmm. right? I think something that, and I think you, you were maybe part of that conversation when you were hanging out at my son house in Breckenridge, but um, this idea of like meme coins are just monetized attention, right? Like we live in this yeah. attention economy. Like it, that's all it is. It's a, it's a, people talk about the financialization of everything, but what is a meme coin then just like, it makes money because people pay attention to it. It's the most literal definition, right? Yeah. Um, and then the cool part is I think most people I hope would agree is that like that's how you bring people into the culture. But then they say, well, these meme coins, I have this soul thing. I have this wallet or I have this base, you know, uh, ETH and I have this wallet, whatever it is, right? Whatever chain it's on. Now yeah. they're suddenly looking around and be like, well, what else can I do with this? Or if they made a lot of money, they're like, what do I do with this money? <laughs> Where do I put it? <laughs> oh, this Dex thing is pretty cool. And then, right. So it's almost like yeah. attention leads to engagement, which leads to conversion. And then that's how we keep growing this thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm full agreement with that, right? Because can you look at again, yeah. crypto aside, it's not it's, it's not a crypto only phenomenon, right? Like you have your know, meme stocks, you have, but even then, it's like you have all the influencer on TikTok and, and and YouTube, and some you might want to claim that they are not legit, but attention is followed by dollars, and then is followed by capabilities. So. I, that is just, I think, the natural of, of how our society is evolving, um, and, and and crypto just being that 
one area that you you started really seeing that financialization of uh, of, of culture. Yeah. It's a crazy time. We're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. Um, yeah. I'm curious about what you're not so optimistic about. What would you feel are, are still maybe some of the bigger blockers maybe for builders and communities in the space, uh, even as this next pool is, is picking up? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that the reality, I mean, actually maybe the flip side of what we just talked about. Yeah, right? yeah. That um, like in terms of scale, again, I came from an area where like we took, the, the type of scale when it comes to technology yeah. is, is magnitudes or ma- multiple magnitudes different than, than yeah. what, what, what blockchain can do. Uh, I mean, I still remember when I first started building, uh, when Matt and yeah. I were building, we we're like, wait, hold on. This NFT thing, like the, the image is not even on the chain. I mean, yeah. it's just yeah. a pointer to, to some other things file system. Yeah. Like, how does that work? Um, and like, again, I understand it, like it's this limitation yeah. and so on, but like, actually that actually speaks to the, 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 the kind of limitation of building like real software, um, on, yeah. on, on blockchain. Like, again, even from, from three years ago, we had come a long, long way, uh, and started mm-hmm. to be able to put like real information on chain. Uh, but I think that we still quite a ways to go in like to building again, yeah. um, like society scale, uh, use cases. Yeah. Right. So right now, like, mm. you can't just put Facebook on, on yeah. chain. Not really, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so, so what does that mean? Uh, but I think like, that that is work to be done. Um, which then, yeah. re- in in a related sense, is like not seeing a bunch of killer application uh, besides mm. a few of the financial yeah. ones, right? I, 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 I think yeah. I think I think like say, stable coin is 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 a very much part of market fit. Use case. So, so there are cases that I think is a, a very uh, already world changing type of uh, yeah. uh, use cases. I just want to see more. I just want to see more yeah. real, like scale um, dApps and scale um, chains or, or, or other protocols out there that makes it like into real use cases. Yeah, and that's the funny thing. I think there was a tweet the other day thinking about like real use cases and. You know, I guess like what you're talking about in a sense is like almost like what we call consumer crypto, right? Like what are the things that people will actually use that maybe aren't just trading money, lending money, you know, so financially oriented. I think uh, Mert uh, from the Solana ecosystem, I think had a tweet, which was like, okay, well now we're back in the bowl. Like we're all these consumer apps that people claim to have been building (laughs) for the past two years. And everyone's just like, uh, I guess, yeah, I don't know. Like... (laughs) How about so, dogs <laughs> with hats? Yeah. yeah, we have cats with hats, you know. Yes. Uh, we have other things. So it is funny. Yes. But, yeah, I agree with you. I think, you know, there's a lot of really interesting stuff being built um, in the consumer crypto space, especially I think, like, base has a lot of momentum right now um, and some of the other ecosystems. So we'll see yeah. what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, curious about what you think about the – think about, like, online communities. Right, because I think that's particularly relevant to what you guys are doing. Um, what do you think? I guess it's more just like a general commentary on the state of online communities. Like, do you think we've learned anything over the past two years? Uh, maybe let's just start there. <laughs> I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. I mean, again, I, I think it's a, it would it would have been more a, a spicier take uh, yeah two years ago, but yeah. you know the idea of well. Focusing so much that being a on-chain community that means yeah. you have to vote on everything. Yeah. Um, it's it's not really the case, um, yeah. and it's actually it makes the the world a lot more difficult. Um, yeah. And 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 sometimes it's just not how people engage and 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 uh, yeah. build relationship. Um, so I'm certainly hopeful that a lot of our sort of new or evolving on chain communities is, is thinking yeah. about those uh, fundamental, like, again, human relationship and the human yeah. inter- interactions, just because the underlying technology is decentralized, it's trustless, doesn't mean that humans is trustless, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like that, that's a, that's part of society. So it's part of yeah. community. Like, like you, trust is a thing and we, we need to find ways to build human trust. evolution. Yeah. Yes. Um, exactly. So, so I think like that. That's the, I think I think it's a big evolution of like yeah. facilitating 
align, like vision align community using new technology like the blockchain uh, to yeah. do cool things and new things from maybe solving climate change, maybe, you know, doing other really cool things on, in, in, around impact, uh, yeah. around building, uh, around decentralized science. Uh, I certainly yeah. can't wait to see those use cases. Uh, but not so focused on voting on everything and decentralizing everything, including trust. Yeah. I mean, I completely agree with you, right? That's, I think, why we're still around is my um, That's always been our philosophy, right? Start centralized, progressive, decentralized. That actually now gets me thinking about, it's very funny, like, um, just even doing my own retrospective thing about online communities. It's like over the past two years, you know, I think two years ago, DAOs were the hot new thing and the sexy thing. And I feel like the thing I've seen on Twitter lately is like, I don't know, basically, I think most people just think DAOs are dead altogether. So curious mm -hmm. about, well, I'm just genuinely curious about like what if and when that's ever going to come back as almost like a narrative. And, and if, you know, everything you're saying, you know, have we learned our lesson? I don't know. We're going to find out. Um, but we need more of that, I guess. Yeah, that's the thing. I think like, it's still really early. Um, yeah. But but, you, but with that, right, I, I think we do see some um, a really interesting experiment being run. Um, so yeah. particularly I think the two, two ecosystems that I know more of, you know, like Optimism yeah. is, is like, yeah. I think being super thoughtful about like yeah. having two houses. It's almost sort of feels like a you know, delegated uh, government structure. Uh, yeah. Arbitrum also do running a bunch of really interesting experiments. So I think that like, people are thinking deeply and, and, yeah. and, and actually showing some early results of like, how do we make key decisions like yeah. allocating capital, like, um, you know, what type of things do we build? Uh, and, and then kind of moving away from this like one token, one vote model, um, and, and, and yeah. all the issues that come with it. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I guess it is, yeah, the foundations I think are like, they're doing a lot of really interesting, innovative stuff um, in terms of like pushing the narrative forward and figuring out how to like build these systems so they work, I guess. Um, right. I guess it's like, because it's still so early, I'm just like thinking out loud. I like, I guess it's, it's like anything else, right? Is um, it's oftentimes the, the innovators are the people who can afford to innovate, right? And so it's like kind of starts at the top and then hopefully those best practices will start to trickle down to right. like the more grassroots, right? Because I think the things you're talking about like with Regen and ReFi and, you know, other more maybe like socially driven or consumer driven ideas, those communities, I think, they're all still figuring it out, right? I, I, I could say like being in a lot of those, I think a lot of them right now are just telegram groups, right? They, they just kind of, yeah. they're like, they, they went the other way. They're just like, forget all the on-chain stuff. We're just gonna be a telegram group <laughs> and build it out. Um, yeah. So now it's like, how do we bring it together, right? How do we find that happy medium? Um, yeah, so we're going there, we're going there. Um, Cool. Well, I think I'm feeling pretty good right now. I think um, we'd love to kind of hear more about, you know, where, what's next for Charmverse, right? So what are you guys up to in the, in 2024? What do you want to share with the world? Uh, is there anything interesting that people should be looking out for? Uh, let us yeah, know. Yeah. So come kind of the couple of things. Um, by the time this uh, this launch, yeah. I think uh, we will be more publicly launch a, a points program. So there's a points program Ooh, coming. There we go. Uh, with yeah. Converse. so you know that that uh, that will be out there. Um, and again, more about like how do we how do we encourage genuine use cases um, and mm. usage of Converse? And certainly, we we are very open in actively discouraging farming. So <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we we care about genuine usage uh, so that's one thing uh, and we talked about identity a lot and, and you yeah. will see us um, coming out with a, a bunch of features and relevant data around uh, individuals uh, as yeah. well as uh, projects and how do they interact mm -hmm. with each other and making it a lot easier to get to know someone uh, in, in, yeah. the, uh, in the web3 space oh yeah I mean that's actually interesting because I will say you know, we have uh, internally like a lot of members who have pretty robust profiles at this point. But I did notice, you know, as I'm looking at other Charmverse spaces that I'm being added to or I'm logged in, I'm like, 
where's the Chumbers directory, right? Like how can these communities start to interact? So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that. They are coming. There we go. Um, and actually I realized we can't go, I, I'm going to rewind just a bit. I realized we didn't talk about points at all. So we'd love to kind of get like wax poetic on points as like a concept, right? Um, mm -hmm. Just like I'll lay down some context, I think, because not everyone may be like fully aware. Um, so I think, you know, kind of summarizing it, right? I think the early meta was just kind of like dropping tokens for engagement and rewarding. And I think it seems like the challenge that came with that was, yeah, there's a lot of farming. There's a lot of bad actors or people who are just faking engagement just to like get the tokens. And I think the really amazing thing about points, obviously, was it's kind of ironic, right? We brought like a Web2 concept of just like, they're just random numbers that aren't backed up by anything. But like by having that system in place, it creates this safe, it, it creates more flexibility, I guess, as a project to be able to create and orient the right program to incentivize the right behaviors. And then you can give the actual tokens which are on chain. Um, it is funny. I just saw a new a team come out. I think it's called, it's not Stacks maybe, or it's Stack. Because um, there's obviously Stacks on Bitcoin, which is like an L2 or whatnot. But this is a different right. one. It's a points program that is on chain. And I saw that. And I was very confused. I'm like, I thought the whole point of points was to get away from the on chain to, you know, like have off chain to be on chain. But now it's yeah. like, we're just going back to it. Um <laughs> So I don't know, with all that, we'll love to get your thoughts on, you know, how are you thinking about points? What's the most interesting thing about it? Um, how are you thinking about uh, gauging real engagement in this case? Yeah. 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 So first of all, points, token, or whatever, yeah. different, different versions of them, at the end of the day, it's about like a way to represent um, yeah. you know, like what, what does the project care about, um, yeah. in terms of like the, when, when you're interacting with it. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think like being able to super thoughtful about that, it's cause it's so easy to say, yeah, do these like three quests and then I like, earn a bunch of points. Like, yeah, you, yeah. Again, you can do it on token, you can do it or whatever. Um, I think the benefit of points is that, uh, if people are having a path toward token that it gives yeah. you a, a chance to really tune some of yeah. these um, behavior because the like, incentive system is super difficult to do. Yeah. Um, uh, again, like coming from engineering, like in the in the eighties, uh, people used to count like you know lines of code and whatever, and then all of a sudden they, they they're surprised the engineers start to having like really long program, a lot of like useless program because of, but they have mm. a lot more lines, right? So. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you, you you incent the behavior that you want um yeah and and sometimes it, it uh surprise surprise humans are actually really good in gaming any kind of system yeah um so uh, we're a bunch particular. of degenerates that's what we you are think, we call some we degens we're all degens we're all degenerates <laughs> yes yeah. no especially again you, you basically you make a statement say like i will pay you if you do these things mm -hmm. and oftentimes you're like okay i will go do those things so i get paid Right. Yeah. That, that's what it comes down to. Um, and, and yeah, so I think we super careful on, on, um, what, yeah. is, what these things are. Uh, again, like using the engineering, uh, analogy, like what, uh, I think what people ended up finding is that like rewarding, uh, team based software or rewarding things like, uh, how, how much long, how, how often does your software go down or like yeah. when something, when, when a bug is introduced, uh, and it takes down the system. How long does it take for you to recover from that? Those yeah. are much harder to fake than mm -hmm. how many lines of code that you write, right? Yeah. Um, and it's also encapsulate a bunch of things when it comes to the team. Like, are you are you transferring knowledge across the team so that like anybody can jump on and fix the software? So it's just a, there's a lot that build into that like one number to say like how fast does it take? How, how long does it take yeah. you to recover from 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 the from the failure? Um, mm. So we have to build in this very similar things when it comes to rewarding points. Um, I don't want you to like, oh, do these two things that like, everybody yeah. would just like, go in and do. Uh, but how can we make it not not the part is not to be harder, but more thoughtful yeah. about like what are the things that we we want to to bring. 
Um, mm. And one of the early points thing that we are bringing, which is actually more about like table stake, is that it's a referral program that like you, you yeah. do refer, um, you do you do get more um, some points, uh, but you will see us some of, some of the some of the trigger that we'll, we'll provide points for will be again less activity based but more impact yeah. driven. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, yeah, and that, that's actually a really good way to think about it, right? Like, what's the impact? Not just click button here every day, right? Because right. what does that really do for anyone? Um, yes. Yeah, I love that. Um, well, there's a lot more to figure out with points. I think we're all, I, I had, like had so many thoughts and then they just kind of, I think I'm just like still <laughs> processing all of it. Um, but yeah. I'm excited. So let's get some points out for uh, for Triverse and, and I'm very excited to see, you know, how that all develops. Oh, I remember now. It was, I think what it is, is what you're exactly talking about. This all ties back to the original conversation, which is user, user experience, right? Because mm -hmm. all of this points, DAOs, you know, communities, and it's all just around how are we designing the incentives to get people to do the things that we want, right? And right. I think when we talk about communities, foundations, DAOs, the beauty of it is if you align the incentives and design the system in the right way, you unlock this magic that I think you couldn't do otherwise in traditional, you know, web two systems because of the nature of, you know, tokens and more trustlessness, you know, not fully, but more, right. Yeah. We, and using points as a mechanism to kind of architect that, uh, that's what gets me really excited. And I think you as well, right. As we're building yeah. all this out. Um, how are we building better types of ways for people to coordinate and and do the things we're trying to do, whatever it may yeah. be, right? So yeah, yeah. just it's reflecting. Uh, it's a uh, just and summarizing, I guess, because I think it all comes full circle. Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's a pretty open design space, so I think yeah. it's uh, it, we 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 got the chance to do a, do a lot of interesting experiments that uh, truly will be truly net new. We're so lucky. We're so lucky. It's a fun space to, to be in, uh, yeah. building the new internet. All right, cool. So I think we're going to move on to rapid fire questions and then round it out from here. Um, so the rapid fire questions, as the name implies, very simple. Uh, I'll ask you a question. Don't think too hard about it. And then we'll blaze through four of these. Uh, we always ask the same ones to every guest. So it's, I, like, it's always fun to hear the different answers. Um, so number one, we'd love for you to pick one project whether in Web3, AI, emerging tech, just in the general space, not including your own that you're most bullish on and excited about. Mm -hmm. So um, there is a new uh, project between the collaboration between uh, Polygon and Fox, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I think is called Verified. Um, so okay. uh, letting you uh, or letting system to be able to uh, verify a particular piece of content, if it is real mm -hmm. or not. Um, I think like this proliferation of, of AI, yeah. uh, I think we, we only see at the beginning of the amount of fake news, fake images, yeah. fake videos that are out there. And yeah, just give it another 18 months. It's, it's like basically anything that you see in the world that you can't trust. Um, and I think like we're very quickly getting into that world and with, with the help of blockchain and I am hopeful that, um, you know, something like that, uh, either that project or something else will enable us to kind of ca provide a counterbalance for, uh, for AI. That's a great one, actually. Uh, I don't even think I was aware of that. So I'm going to have to go with Google that because I feel like something we've, we heard about last year when AI like blew up and everyone's like, I'm pivoting from crypto to AI was kind of like this <laughs> idea of like, what's the intersection? And I think that's right. kind of where most people are, right? Is like in a world of mm -hmm. infinite content, how do you verify? Um, yeah. So I'm excited about that. We're probably going to need more, I'll be honest, because there's a lot. That's the... <laughs> and now we have the video generation, right? Like the Sora release, yes. and it's crazy. So it, It's crazy yeah. and it's scary at the same time, right? Like, again, like yeah. literally any any image, video that you see, at some points, like, I don't know if this is real. Like, that, yeah. what kind of and, world is and, that? And by the way, as an American, we have an election cycle coming up in, you know, like eight months. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. like, it's happening. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I might have to run off to Asia at that point. We'll see. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, this next one is one of my favorites. Um, past 12 months, biggest professional learning. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, 
I found, and, and, and this is like more than 12 months now, but yeah, being an entrepreneur, I'm just so consumed with like building and, and, and I, yeah. I'm actually, first of all, I, a, I, I don't believe in work by balance. I, I, I think about it yeah. all the time, but granted, <laughs> I also like dedicate my time when I'm yeah. spending time with my friends and family. And I think yeah. like, this like work, uh, work life integration is a better mm -hmm. version of that, but that's a whole different mm. story. But I think okay. what I learned more is that like really purposely taking time. Um, mm -hmm. I take, it sound, it sound like a dating profile. I like taking long walks. Um, yeah, yeah. Cause I think like when, whenever I have like bigger pieces of things to think about, really stepping away from the busy, busy tasks that, uh, that I have, I'm like, there's an infinite amount of, uh, pieces of things I can do. Like really believing in the, the 80, 20 rules that like finding that, the uh, 20% of work that really provided 8% of value, um, and, and executing on it. It's a, uh, it's, it's a big learning for me over the past twelve months. Oh, that's a really good one. Yeah. And I, I can, I can, uh, empathize with that one. Cause I think it's the same thing. Like in this space, like things are moving a million miles a minute. There's new technologies, new updates, new customers, mm -hmm. new people wanting new things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just being able to kind of cut through the noise and I love that 80, 20 reflecting, just taking your time, go for nice long walks on the beach. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, Sometimes on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, into it. I'm into it. Um, next one, you have a million dollars. Um, maybe more if that's not enough, whatever, a lot of money that's airdropped into a crypto wallet or bank account. Can't yeah. work on Charmverse. Um, you can bring Matt with you if you want. Um, <laughs> what would you go build some today or tomorrow? Yeah. Let's say you go take a nice little sabbatical. You can't work on Charmverse anymore. What are you going to do? It's actually probably either um, on provide, find, finding ways to provide the counterbalance of, uh, of AI. Um, yeah. Or if I can find a good particular use case of solving part of climate change. Like there's something that like we can uniquely provide value. Uh, that would be sort of the things I would do. I'm into it. Yeah, very relevant. Um, I think the AI threat's very real and obviously climate change is very real. So uh, <laughs> maybe we got to get some like regen organizations, just get them out to Charmverse and you know, that, that's one way of helping out, right? We're talking um, to some. Uh, there we like, go. For example, for yeah. example like uh, Kyoto mm -hmm. Protocols uh, runs their grants yeah. program off of uh, off of Chambers, as an example. There you go. That's a that's a good uh, that's a good little promo there. I like that. <laughs> uh, very relevant. Okay, and then the last one here, um, very open ended, but thinking about twenty twenty four and this upcoming bull market. Do you, what are your craziest predictions? And you can get weird with it. You know, don't overthink it, but what are your craziest predictions for this industry, whether it's web three, AI and emerging tech as a whole? Um, I think we see a, lot, a longer bull run than we expected. Um, I mm. think like this, like, I think people talk a lot about like super cycle and all this, like very backward yeah. looking, um, like, look, like basically it's like looking at charts and predict the future using the same chart. Um, I, I, I think we'll break the chart. Um, it, it, it partially just because of like, fun, well, first of all, I don't believe in looking at, at charts to predict like charts for the future. Um, but yeah, I, I think like fundamentals are, are, are different, uh, in, in the, in the macro side. And then they, I think the curve will look very different. I would agree with you there. I think it's like, I, it's, it's such a funny thing because I don't think anyone wants to be the person that's like, this time it's different and it's not different. <laughs> but I think most people feel like it is different, right? Because the past like three, four, however, however you define the cycles, right? But to me, it's like there are three or four at this point. But if you look at all the cycles, like we didn't have governments adopting this technology. We didn't have financial institutions adopting this technology. It was all crypto and Bitcoin at one point, but now it's a robust, you know, multi-trillion dollar industry that's, that's growing. Um, so I would agree with you there. Um, let's see what happens. But, and then you got people like us building, right? And I think, as you said, yeah. a lot of years and a lot of money uh, and a lot of effort that people put in to getting this adopted. So 
We'll see. Yeah. You think that's going to, yeah. well, and I'm sure there'll be intersections, you know, with AI and everything else um, coming up and then global economics as well. Like everything's changing. We're, we're in such a unique time. That, yeah. That's the thing. I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in, in so we, we currently live in this exponential age that, yeah, it's not just blockchain. It's just like magic words. Mul- yes. It's, right? like, yeah. It's like, every, like the multiple foundational changing technology that are happening all at the same time. Uh, but yeah, then you look at blockchain, it's like, yeah, like it didn't have an ETF for a long, for, for forever. Or some believe that it wasn't any, it wasn't going to happen anytime soon. And then now, like, you know, it's one of the most successful ETF ever. Um, and, and then back to my point about like, yeah, before even we enter, like I couldn't even store it. I think couldn't even the image like, on, the, on the blockchain on the NFT that like, we, you know, we're minting. We came a very long way in a very short period of time. Uh, so like this yeah. ability to like all the pieces being in place, financial capital and so on. And then yeah. maybe the last thing would be one way to think about, I think like wallets and blockchain is like, it's kind of mm-hmm. like mobile phones that yeah. without people having the wallet to begin with, like onboarding is just very difficult or like just having proper people to try to use anything because they're like, well, first thing you do, like do these like eight steps and then like get this like, you know, secret face and fr- phrase and then like put it away somewhere. It's, it's crazy. But again, like I think a lot of those things are either they are people have the wallet because they want, they want to trade mean coins uh, or they want to collect an NFT or whatever, or they're like, the, the, the app automatically creates a wallet for you. So I think a lot of these things are, are all, again, moving forward together. And I think the combined impact of them is, 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 is a modification effect. And now getting a wallet is easier than ever, right? Because I think there's some really interesting folks like Magic's been doing it for a long time, you know, yeah. Dynamic Wallet and now Privy and everyone's making it so easy to, to get a wallet you don't even know so like exactly bullish on consumer crypto meme coins the technology is there like solana is breaking but it's in a good way because so many people are using it that they're yeah. viewing it as like this is a stress test but i would say like if you look at the amount of volume that they've had a process they've done pretty well uh compared to any i think what any other chain would um and even and also like all the evm chains right with what was the 4844 or which one, whatever the upgrade was most recently, right? With the blob yeah. and the Denkin upgrade. Like, it's getting cheaper, faster. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. We're excited. Yeah. And it, but one note on that, like, we, we think about like credentials and attestations. We were just talking about like just like, doing some back of the envelope math. Like, it costs us almost a dollar per attestation before the upgrade. And it's going to cost it more like a couple of cents, right? And that that is the kind of like differences of like, sure, we'll mint a bunch of them. How much is going to cost me like, you know, a few bucks versus I'm talking about like hundreds of dollars. Like it, it changes the calculus, right? And like that kind of math is like happening across all of the things. Exponential age, right? Uh, across everything, but even in terms of the progress, even within blockchain, it's, it's literally orders of magnitude faster and, and cheaper, or maybe not faster, but at least cheaper. And it's hopefully cheaper. will get faster and even more cheaper, even cheaper over time. So we'll right. get there, we'll get there. Um, okay, well, beautiful. So that's pretty much it for all the questions we have. And I, I really enjoyed this conversation. I think we covered a lot of ground here. Um, I think the very last thing is we'd love to have you as always, we give our guests an opportunity to show yourself. So where can we find you? Charmverse? Is there anything you want people to go look at specifically? Um, this is your moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, uh, any community can use Charmverse. So, you know, come to charmverse.io, uh, it's like charming universe. Um, and uh, yeah, come check us out. And uh, we know we are very uh, open to, to, to chatting. So ping us uh, in Discord, ping us on Twitter. Um, love, to, love to catch up with the community. We love it. We love it. Um, you heard it here first. Check out charmers.io and uh, figure it out uh, and get in touch, get in touch. Okay, perfect. Well, listen, Alex, this was really fun. Really enjoyed our conversation. Um, I hope you did as well. And uh, I will, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So I'll see you online. Uh, you know, we'll keep chatting uh, about, you know, how we can partner up and uh, excited to see what the year holds. Yeah.
Yeah, it was a great time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much, Alex. I'll see you online. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye. All right. Ciao, ciao. We hope you enjoyed that episode of NetCetera. cetera. If you'd like to support us, please subscribe, give us a like, and tune in anywhere you get your podcasts. Thank you so much.